If you find your place in 1 Peter for this evening's message, Brother Schwarzler is going to come and bring the Word of God for us and to us in just a moment. 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 6 is our text. I'll tell you a little story. This morning we sang happy birthday to a young man, and he was watching via the live stream. And after we finished, his mother texted, and after we finished singing, he clapped his hands and he said, I won! <laughs> <laughs> it's really precious. Lord's blessed us, hasn't he? 1 Peter chapter 4, our text is verses 1 through 6. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. For the time past, our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead." For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Have something ready to write with. Brother Schwarzler, if you come, bring the word of God to us. God bless you, brother. So before we begin in 1 Peter, uh, throughout this text, there are two mindsets or two ways, the way of man and the way of God. And in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15 is a verse that I believe is a great key verse for this passage. And the Bible reads, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the god of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So uh, that verse, throughout this entire message, just keep that verse in mind, because you will see that there is the way of man and there's the way that God would want for us Christians. So, starting in verse 1, the Bible reads, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. So, in this verse, we see Christ was chastised. Uh, the previous chapter, in what was taught on last week, uh, that was brought out, that Christ suffered for us in the flesh. And as Christ suffered for us, we too ought to have a Christ-like testimony when we're going through trial. And... We've been talking about that being Christ-like during trials for several re weeks now because this is the emphasis right now that Peter's putting. And uh, during our suffering and chastisement, we should be pleasing to God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, a section that we already went through, but in 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7, the Bible reads, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried by, with fire, might be found 
unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So, what the goal of our suffering and chastisement is, is to develop Christ's likeness. Now, we are, ought to have the Christ likeness during the trial, but it also helps us to become more Christ like because Christ suffered and he remained perfect in that. Now, that perfection is not something that we can 100% obtain. Now, we can't even get anywhere close to the perfection, to the Christ likeness that the Lord would have, but by the Holy Spirit, we are able to come close to that. And in verse 2, the Bible says that he no longer should live the rest of his life, uh, rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. So uh, in this verse, it's talking about the chastisement developing the Christ likeness. But uh, it is also bringing about salvation because the unsaved person, they go through trials and tribulations just like us, but the Lord is working in them to bring about a, a knowledge of him unto salvation because Jesus is the only one that can truly help someone through a trial or tribulation. And in this, the Bible brings out uh, that we ought to witness to others. And you'll see that later on. But as Christians, we should not live in the flesh, but we should follow the will of God as well. Now, you see here that there is what man would want, which is to live by the flesh, and there is what God wants, which is to follow his will. So the will of God is what we ought to follow. But the unsaved person will follow the flesh, and the uh, backslidden or weak Christian will follow the flesh. And that is something that ought not to be uh, for the weak or backsling Christian. And as Christians, we ought to reach out to those people to help them, to bring them back to what the will of God is. In verse 3, as we continue on, the Bible says, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. So, in verse 3, the first part is, we as Christians, we used to live in sin according to the flesh. And uh, verse 3, it's, uh, I'm so thankful that God gave wisdom to the translators because uh, I was reading it, and the, uh, it didn't necessarily make all that much sense to me. But then I went and looked at the Greek, and I'm like, okay, they translated it good. Because uh, the differences between languages sometimes makes it so that it's difficult. And... They did a great job with that, though we might not understand it as well without uh, looking into it. But uh, we as Christians, we used to live in sin. Uh, our past life, uh, our pa the past of our lives were sin. It was uh, to do the will of the flesh, to do the will of the devil, to do the will of the unsaved person. And the Bible says, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable 
idolatries. Now, some of you might say, I never did that before I was saved. And uh, that might be so, but in seed form, to some extent, you might have had just a thought, thinking, oh, that might be good, or I might want to do that. And the Bible brings out in a lot of places that if you even think a sin, it is the same as actually doing it. And we ought to repent of any sin that we even think of that uh, uh, we should ask for repentance. But the unsaved person, they're walking in all this uh, evil. And it is not something that the Christian should have within them. And uh, as Christians, it is, uh, we have the Holy Spirit that is guiding us away from this stuff. But the, unsaved per, uh, the saved person that is rejecting the Holy Spirit's working in their lives and is backslidden or weak, they might start to have some of those things in seed form pop up in their lives. And that's not good. And they need to repent. And if you are truly saved, and you are like that, and you're seeing that develop in your life, you need to repent and pray to God for forgiveness of your sins. Now, being a Christian, uh, you don't have to be saved again. God already did the work of redemption in your life that uh, changed you from being on your way to hell to being saved and going to heaven. That work's already done. What you're doing then is repenting of your sin and turning your life back over to the one who is rightfully to be in control of it. And as Christians in, uh, that uh, have the Holy Spirit and are not rejecting the Holy Spirit, we have to make sure in our lives that God is always our first priority or else there will be the temptation to go into sin. Because if God is not first and foremost, then what is? Most likely, it will be something that is of the flesh, something the flesh would desire. And that is not what the Lord would have for you. In verse 4, the Bible says, Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So, the unsaved cannot fathom why you would turn from the sin that made you happy. And they will say hateful things like, he got religion, or he's a Bible thumper. But that is just showing the working of God in your life unto salvation. That he has saved you, and that is the natural outflow of that. That the people you used to hang with in sin, they're going to notice, hey, something's different about this guy. He doesn't want to uh, go out and get drunk or uh, do drugs or whatnot. And that friendship disintegrates. Now, I've done neither of those, but I know people, and I've uh, been soul-winning partners with people that that's their testimony. They got saved, and all the bad influences in their life dropped away because they did not want to uh, be a part of that. They would rather have been in sin than to do to ha accept the Lord into their life to change them. And that is something that a lot of unsaved people, they'll think, this could be difficult if I get saved. I will lose friends. Yes, that's very likely. But the thing is, you'll make new friends. 
good, godly Christian, friends. And uh, the Lord will greatly work in you, changing you into what he would have. But not only is this the case with the unsaved person, but the saved person that is living or is uh, taking part in the things of the flesh, they also will uh, see a Christian that is in good standing or that is uh, doing what the Lord would have, they might look at them and say the same thing, that uh, uh, they can't fathom why you would do something that they wouldn't do, like witnessing to people. As a Christian, that's something we ought to do. But there's Christians out there that believe that you shouldn't witness. And they will make fun of people that do witness. There are people out there that will make fun of you for maintaining a Christ-like testimony when you're out in public. And I believe that is something that you ought to do. That people ought to be able to say there is something different about that person. And ask, uh, it opens the door for them to ask, what's different about you? And if you're just acting like the world, that ain't ever going to happen. And the people that are acting like the world can't fathom why another Christian would maintain a Christ-like testimony in such a situation. As we move on to verse 5, we see, Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the uh, quick and the dead? So, those that are unsaved, they will give an account to God who will judge them. And God, he gave us his son so that we will not have to endure the suffering and torment of hell. As Christians, we won't have to endure that. But for the unsaved person, if they do not accept the mercy of God and have Jesus become the Lord and Savior of their life, then they are on their way to the fire and the torment and the everlasting pain of hell. And as Christians, that's where we were going before we got saved. And it is something that we should be witnessing to the unsaved person so that they do not go there. But the unsaved person, they will be judged according to what they do. And... The person, the Christian that's backslidden, they will be judged. We all will be judged. But as Christians, every single sin that we've ever done, it's covered by the blood of Jesus. So on Judgment Day, when we stand before the Lord, He will not see our sin. He will see the blood of Jesus. And that is something that is hard for Christians to fathom, and it's hard for me to fathom, just how awesome, how merciful, how gracious God has been to us, that while I deserved the worst torment ever, that he made it so that I wouldn't have to go there, and that I could get all the blessings that he gave to his son, because His son died for our sins. And that is so amazing. How great and good God is towards us. In verse 6, the Bible says, For for, uh, this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to to men in the flesh, 
but live according to God in the Spirit. So, in this uh, verse 6, we see the gospel is preached to those that are dead in sin. As you and I that are Christians were, that the unsaved might be saved. And the unsaved person, they're dead in their sin. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, the Bible says, And you were dead in the trespasses in sin in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Amen. And that is just so amazing. That we, a sinner deserving of hell, that was dead in trespasses and sin, God changed us so that we uh, don't have to endure that wrath. But we ought to go into the world and tell people about what God's done in our lives. Because God made us dead. I mean, uh, we were dead, and God saved us from that. He made us alive in Christ. And uh, the dead person that's out there that is unsaved, they need that salvation. They need to be alive in Christ. And it's only by Christ that that will happen. And if they don't get saved before it's everlasting too late, before they die physically, then they will go to hell and burn for all of eternity. You couldn't put a dot in the room that would compare to the scope of eternity. That is how long it is. In our time, you could have since the beginning of the earth to the end of the earth, and that wouldn't even compare at all to eternity. And the unsaved person, they will be burning for all that time, burning and never uh, ceasing in their pain for all of eternity. And as Christians, we ought to think, do we want that for other people? The answer ought to be, no, absolutely not. Amen. Then we ought to do something about that. Because God was gracious and merciful to us. And that while we were dead in sin, he made us alive. We also should be gracious and merciful to others in telling them how they can know for sure that they are saved, how they can uh, be right with God and have the blood of Jesus cleanse them from all their sins. And that is something that we ought to do. It should be a rep uh, repetition that... God makes us alive uh, from being dead. And we tell others uh, about what God has done. And then God does that to them. And they tell others. And you'll see how great God works. But we don't see Christians in America witnessing as we ought to. We see in America that a lot of Christians are lax about their salvation. They look at it as fire insurance, that they're not going to hell. And that is so sad. It is so much more than that. We ought to understand that we have a purpose to see the lost saved. So Christian, if you're walking 
in sin. Repent and be changed so that the, so that the lost might be saved and so that uh, you might be saved. And if you're a Christian that the world mocks, praise the Lord because that means you're doing something right because the world does not like the Word of God. Satan knows the Word of God. He knows what's going to happen to him, but he wants to see God mocked as much as possible. And if the world is mocking you, then you know, hey, you're doing something right because the devil doesn't like that. If you're a Christian that the world mocks, then praise the Lord. But if not, you ought to get right with the Lord. You ought to grow in the Lord. You ought to preach and teach and tell others the Bible, witness to the lost, and pray for their salvation, and pray for other Christians. Because we as Christians, everything that we do for reaching others it is a difficult thing. And it requires the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And we all need prayer for courage, for wisdom, and that the Lord would greatly work in our lives. So Christian, will you do what the Lord has? Will you tell others? Will you pray for the lost? And will you see God work greatly. Pastor?